So looking at part A, what are our treatments? What's the treatment? Come on. Who's going to be the brave soul? I'm going to start calling on people. I don't like to do that. Yes. Getting zapped and not zapped. Okay? Zapping. About the only time you'll probably ever use that word in a math class. Um, what's the response variable? What are we measuring? Okay, whether they grow. Okay, do they z or do they sprout? That's the response variable. Uh, do they sprout? It's very important to know the the difference here. Okay. <clears throat> so, what is wrong with Carlos's experiment? <laughs> I know it's wrong. What's wrong with it though? He didn't have a control group. He zapped all of them. He has nothing to compare it to. Okay, so no comparison slash control, whatever you want to call it, either one. Okay. You can't give the same treatment to everything and be able to draw conclusions. Okay, what's wrong with Mia's uh, experiment? Yeah, she looked at the ones that were healthy uh, and zapped those. And uh, then, you know, the other two, they were just kind of out of luck. So um, they, it was not random, okay? It was not random. <clears throat> she kind of pick and chose, okay? That's adding bias to this experiment right here because she picked out the ones that were healthy. All right. Um, what about Julia? What seems to be wrong with hers? Yeah, she doesn't have enough. She picked four. That's not a very good experiment size. Um, the other, and you know, especially coming after the other ones, at least Carlos had 10, Mia had 20, so those are pretty good numbers. Yeah, four is not enough. Um, not enough subjects is one way to put it. Okay, so can somebody, kind of putting all these together, so to speak, who, who thinks they have a good idea um, for designing a good experiment here? What group came up with a good idea? Hmm? Mallory, is that you? Yeah. Or, I mean, as individuals, it doesn't matter. Who has an idea? Uh, what good thing can we take from Mia's? She had 20. Okay, so for Mia's, let's take her sample size. 20 seeds. Um, is there really anything good to take out of Carlos's? Not really, because he's after all of them. Okay, at least Mia took, she took a lot of them, and she split them into two groups. So if we pretty much take Mia's experiment... Uh, and just don't randomly pick which 10 um, we should zap. Uh, Mia's is pretty good, except for the fact that she had that bias for picking which ones were healthy. Okay, so let's talk about, look, flip your paper over, okay, look at number two there. It says, in a typical experiment, two or more treatments are randomly assigned to an available group of people, animals, plants, or objects, and those are our subjects. Okay, so we're trying to establish cause and effect. Does this cause this effect? Um, does one treatment cause a different response than the other treatment? So you've got to know these three characteristics. A well-designed experiment must have these three characteristics. Um, and this is going to be uh, a question on the quiz. It's not that you have to give me the three uh, characteristics, but you have to identify, well, does this experiment have it? It's kind of a checklist. Does it have random assignment? Okay, you do not purposefully assign a certain treatment to a certain subject. Does it have a sufficient number of subjects? Now, um, this, there's, this one can be a little tricky because there's not like a specific number for what is a sufficient number. Uh, but I think it was pretty obvious in the bean experiment, four is not enough. Okay, you can't just compare two and two. 
that's not going to be enough. Um, so, and they, and they explain there. Um, and then the third one is having a comparison or a control group. Okay, you have to have something to compare to because it may be that, you know, whatever the reaction is, is just a natural reaction. It may have nothing to do with the experiment at all. It may have happened anyways. So you have to have something to compare it to. Um, so we kind of already talked about this, but if you look back on Carlos's uh, experiment, which one was uh, or which ones were Carlos missing? He didn't have the comparison or the control group, and because he didn't have that, he also couldn't have random assignment, right? So let's number these, one, two, and three. So Carlos was missing three, and as a result, he was also missing number one, because he didn't have, he didn't have two treatments, he couldn't assign them. Mia was missing what? She was just missing the random assignment, okay? Uh, and Julia, she was missing number two, the sufficient number of subjects. She had the, the comparison or control group, and she had the random assignment, but she was missing that sufficient number of subjects. Okay, uh, we're not going to look at question B there, as it refers to another experiment that we didn't do. Um, and I kind of just talked about this, what can go wrong if the treatments are not assigned randomly to the subjects? Well... Obviously, we saw that in uh, Julie's or in Mia's experiment. Um, you can end up with bias. Okay, um, things aren't going to be able to be explained by the treatment. Um, they'll be explained due to other other factors. Okay, um, so you end up with bias if you do not randomly assign the subjects. Okay, let's keep going here. Let's talk about lurking variables, okay? Lurking variables are very interesting, uh, I think, but they can explain the association between treatments and the response, but it's not the explanation that the study was designed to test. Um, treatments are assigned randomly to subjects to equalize the effects of possible lurking variables among the treatment groups as much as possible. Um, so we're, I'm going to have you guys read uh, the situation there in... Uh, Described in A, we're talking about researchers from the Minnesota Antibiotic Resistance Collaborative reported an attempt to deal with the problem that bacteria are becoming resistant to antibiotics. One reason for increasing resistance is that some people want antibiotics when they have a cold, even though cold viruses do not respond to antibiotics. Uh, most of you, I believe, have had biology. You should know that. A virus does not respond to an antibiotic. Antibiotics are a response to a bacteria. Um, but some people go to the doctor when they have a cold and they're like, give me medicine. Um, and doctors will give them antibiotics. But it's not going to treat what the real problem is if they do have a cold virus. So anyways, um, I want you to read that next paragraph there about what they did. Uh, and then I want you to answer the questions 